Good morning. Friends, I want to welcome you to Good Shepherd. Uh, those who are gathered here in person, those who are joining us online, a uh, special welcome to our guest visitors, uh, extended family. We're uh, gl glad to have all of you here. Uh, I invite you to, uh, to stand and join me for the uh, call to worship. The, the liturgy will be on the screen, so please uh, follow along. Friends, we're gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Glorious is your name in all the earth. We celebrate who you are and all that you have done for us. You hold our lives in your hands and catch us when we stumble. So we come together today led by your Holy Spirit to worship you, to sing your praises, to confess our mistakes, and to receive your love and mercy made possible through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be present among us as we worship you and as we open ourselves to your word. To you be all glory now and forever. Amen. Let's sing together. Good morning, everybody. We love when you sing out nice and strong with us on Sunday morning, and, and we're so grateful to have these musicians up here behind me. Uh, this first song is a really high-energy song, and I would like to do one verse and one chorus for you before we start doing this song together. So give this a listen, all right? Take a listen. It goes like this. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my hope. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my all right, now here comes the high energy chorus. In you, in you I find my peace. In you, in you I find my strength. In you I live and move and pray. Let everything I say and do be founded by my faith in you. I lift up holy hands and sing. Let the praises ring. All right, you got it? We're going to go back to the beginning. Back to the beginning. Here we go. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my hope. Sounds good today. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my hope. All right, here we go. In you, in you I find my peace. In you, in you I find my strength. In you, I live and move and pray. Break it down now. Let everything I say and do be founded by my faith in you. I lift up holy hands and sing. Let the praises ring. All right, now here we go. Second verse. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I give my hands. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I give my feet. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I give my everything. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I give my life. In you, in you I find my peace. Everything I say and do, be counted by my faith in you. I lift up holy hands and sing, let the praises ring. One final chorus. In you, in you, I find my peace. 
Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. Uh, let's, con you guys got it? Okay. We're searching here. I think you might maybe know, but follow along with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, congregation may be seated, and I'm going to invite our baptismal family and sponsor forward. Uh, the, the liturgy will be on the screen, and we uh, invite the congreg congregation has uh, multiple responses along the way, so we invite you to be a part of that. We good? All right. Holy baptism is God's gift to us. In this sacrament, we are welcomed into the body of Christ, the church. We become part of the family of God. God will take water and add to it the power of the word of God. Baptism is a rebirth, a new life in Christ. Let me read the words of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Today you're responding to the command of Jesus and the love of God. Baptism is a beautiful picture of the grace of God, and we all rejoice with you on this special day. I ask you, parents and sponsor, will you faithfully bring this child to worship? Teach her the Lord's Prayer, the creeds, and the Ten Commandments. Place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for her instruction in the Christian faith. If so, say we will. We will. Do you believe in the words of the creed we've just confessed? If so, say we do. Martin Luther says, baptism is not water only, but it's water used together with God's word and by God's command. God has rescued us through this washing and cleansing, which gives us new birth and life. Please present this child of God for holy baptism. We, we present, present Sophie Ann May, May for, for the sacrament of holy baptism. baptism. Take her. All right. <laughs> I can hold it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Sophie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As good as Mom. Better choice, anyway. So if you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ forever. <laughs> Amen. It's okay. Today we receive this child of God to be part of our Christian community. What is your response to this new child of God? 
Sophie, we welcome you and promise to pray for you and show our love for you in the years to come. And you'll say amen. amen. Sophie Ann, let your light so shine before others they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. You okay with holding that? There you go, Teddy. Very carefully. Kelly, as a sponsor, you're making a commitment to surround this child with your love and prayers and do all you can to help the parents raise her in the Christian faith. Will you pray for them, love them, teach them the word of God, and stand with them in joy and sorrow? If, if so, say yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. And let us pray. You all right, Teddy? Okay. God, you make light to shine in the darkness. You allow new life to spring out of old. We are thankful that you accept this child as your own. We are grateful for the gift of grace, which accepts us as we are. May this your child grow in faith, and always know she is part of your family and you are her loving God. May each of us know the joy of abundant life in Christ and remember the special day when water joined the word and touched our spirits. Amen. It's our newest child of God, Sophie. How about a round of applause for her? I'm going to invite you to stand. Uh, peace of Christ be with you always. Let's introduce ourselves to each other. Friends, it is uh, good to see all of you here. Uh, again, special welcome to our guests and visitor, visitors. It is always helpful for us here or if you're at home, if you check in, let us know that you've gathered to worship. Uh, whenever you check in, it's also an opportunity if you uh, have a prayer request uh, to let us know that. Uh, but we, uh, again, thank you for that uh, important discipline of doing that for us. Uh, I want to just remind middle school and high school kids and their families, uh, it is time to get signed up for next summer's mission trips. I need to send in a registration here in the next couple weeks uh, for the middle school trip to Pittsburgh, high school work camp to Scranton. If you don't have that information, send me an email. I'll get it to you right away. Uh, they will, the kids will be going mini golfing today, middle school, high school kids. Jessica is here. Uh, even though we plan to do this outside, we'll be, they'll be going to Monster Mini Golf on Gaither Road, uh, which is a Oh, fa fabulous place to go. Uh, the Duffels for Dignity project is going on right now. This is sponsored by the Women's Ministry of the Church. Uh, it helps benefit the Montgomery County foster care. Uh, so in our weekly e-blast, there's a lot of information on how to participate. Uh, Women's Ministry has their second Sunday get-together next week uh, following late church. Uh, they're going to just uh, people bring a meal, eat in Shepherd's Hall together, and then go hiking over at Lake Needwood, and that'll be led by Elise Bowman. Uh, speaking of the women, uh, next uh, two weeks from yesterday is the fall retreat. Uh, we want to encourage you to get signed up for that right away. Uh, Pastor Katie of Living Faith in Rockville will be facilitating that, partnering with us for that important event. I would just say if you're going to plan to come, please think about signing up this week as opposed to next week. It just, just helps in the planning process. And uh, lastly, our Wednesday night service. We have a weekly uh, half-hour service every Wednesday night. Uh, the series is called Sabbath as Resistance, Saying No in a Culture of Now, and it's been very, very insightful. Uh, Pastor Jan is uh, preaching uh, this Wednesday. With that, we're going to continue with our reading. The reading is from 2 Timothy, chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, 
to Timothy, my beloved child. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The word of the Lord. Oh, it is on, okay. Could we have kids come forward? I'm like the worst tech person. So you're probably gonna see me every week trying to figure this out. I have the children's message right up here. And Sophie's coming too. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming out, especially on this rainy day. Um, last week we talked about us helping a refugee family, a family that had run away from danger and that's staying in this area, and we talked about all the different ways we help them, and this is the house that we're renting for them. They just are moving in now, and that's them in front of their new house, whichever one. Which is the easiest to look at? This one over here for you guys? Right there. Isn't that great? Yeah, pretty special. So that picture came this week, so I thought you might want to see it. But for this week's message, I'm going to start with a question. Who knows what that word faith mean? Anyone have any ideas? Faith? Oh, right over here. Right now, Rich. Like you believe in them, like you hope they make it? You, you believe. That's a... People use the word believe for faith all the time. Anyone else have anything else? That's perfect. It's good. Anyone want to add something? Another word I like to use is trust. You believe so much in God that you trust in them. And in the um, gospel lesson that we're going to read in a minute, it says that if you have faith, you can make a miracle happen. Miracle. Another big churchy word. What do you th guys think a miracle is? Anyone have any ideas? You want to try Cassandra? Um, whenever, when, when, when someone does something nice for them. It can be something very nice. Yeah, that can be nice. It's even bigger than that, but that's very good. It can be a very nice thing that happens. I'm going to talk to you about a miracle that's very nice. Abby. It's monumental monumental wow that's a great word isn't that monumental it's something unbelievable monumental unexplainable crazy wonderful it's something that you don't think can happen that with trust in god 
you can make big things happen. So this week, I decided I'm going to see what my what the internet thinks, and I did a search. You know, it says in the Bible, you can with a little faith do a miracle. So I asked my phone. Christian with faith does miracle to see what happened. And this guy's face popped up. This is the guy I've been reading a lot about this week. Has anyone seen this face before? Pastor Christian Fuhrer. I hadn't. Amazing. Go home and research this guy. Amazing guy. He's a Lutheran pastor, was a Lutheran pastor, from Leipzig in East Germany. And he was known, he had a nickname. He was known as the pastor in the denim vest. Can you guess why he got that nickname? It's not very original. Rachel. He was wearing a denim vest. Yes, he wore a denim vest all the time. So he was known as the pastor in the denim vest. So on September 20th, 1982, that's him way back then, when he was a little bit younger, he started in his church the Prayers of Peace. And they still do them to this day. They're called Frieden's Gabita. Frieden's Gabita, the prayers of peace. Every Monday night in the Nicholas Church in Leipzig. And they were praying for the end of a terrible fight between the people in East Germany and West Germany. And not a lot of people came. A few came every week. Every Monday night they'd come to pray. And they pray for peace. They pray that there'd be change in their country. And they came regularly, and they didn't stop. But they came for many years, and it was just a small bunch of people, but they didn't give up. But then something happened. People started thinking they were dangerous, their little prayer group in the church. And they started trying to stop the prayer group. So what do you think is going to happen when they say, stop praying? What do you think is going to happen? Okay. They're not going to stop. That's right, Ivy. They didn't stop. They prayed. They kept praying, and more people started coming to the prayer group. Different churches started joining them, and it got bigger. And they thought they were getting more dangerous because more people were talking about these ideas they were praying for, that all the German people be together and live as one people. And then they decided they were going to arrest some of the people and try to stop it. And then a miracle happened. 120,000 people came to the prayer group the next week. And the next week, 320,000 people. And it was organized from the Monday night prayer group into the Monday demonstrations of Leipzig. One of the most effect, one of the most successful, the best peaceful demonstrations in the history of the world. And it's one of the main reasons for the fall of the Berlin Wall, seven years after it was started, from a small prayer group it began. Now, there was a lot of other things happening, but Father um, Christian Fuhrer said, he has a lot of great quotes, you don't think your candles and prayers can change something, but history saw things differently. If anything deserves the word miracle at all, then this would be a miracle of biblical proportions. We succeeded in bringing a revolution which achieved Germany coming together, and it was a peaceful one after so much violence and wars. And then my favorite quote of his, he said, if you don't believe in miracles, you're not a realist, which just means miracles are real. Most people don't realize that the fall of the Berlin Walls had religious roots and that a little faith can make a miracle. Will you pray with me? We're going to repeat after me. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for Christian Fuhrer and other great Christians who show us how to pray for peace and love. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming up. We invite the rest of our congregation to stand as you're able at this point and join us in the singing of our Song of the Word.
you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who was just coming in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not, rather not say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you thank your slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Oh, please be seated. Grace and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So Jesus says, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to the sycamore or mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Luke's, uh, in Luke's gospel, right before the parable I just read, the disciples had asked Jesus, increase our faith. Increase our faith. In Luke, it's just kind of a part of this longer series of sayings that don't all seem to connect to one another. That first part of the, didn't seem to match what I, the latter part today. But uh, when it appears in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, the, the context is different. Um, in Matthew, Jesus says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. That's probably what more of us remember. Faith can move mountain. Um, Matthew says the disciples have just returned from their first outreach mission where they've been sent out without Jesus, but going out to represent him in his name. They've gone out trying to help, but in some ways they haven't had a boatload of success. They were sent out to make an impact, and there's the sense that they are not sure if they really did much. They kind of feel like they faltered. So they start doing some soul searching and their assessment of themselves is something is wrong with them. Their uh, self-diagnosis is we don't seem to have enough faith. So they ask Jesus, increase our faith, please increase our faith. Their assumption is a common one, probably one that a lot of us sort of believe. Their assumption is that faith is about quantity. It's a quantitative thing, something you 
store up, something you accumulate, something you add to. Uh, the more you have, uh, the more you can do. So Jesus, though, sort of challenges a little bit of that mindset today. He has a different outlook. He says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, the smallest seed that they knew in that day, um, the sense is you can move mountains, you can uproot trees. Uh, you don't need a lot of faith because faith is not a commodity. It's not something you quantify. It's not something you accumulate like money. Money, uh, we understand money. And we understand that if you don't have a lot, you realize you can't buy a lot, you can't go on a lot of experiences, your options can be fairly limited. But if you have a lot of money, the world kind of opens up to you. You have a lot of options. You can go on many experiences. You can accumulate whatever you want. You just are, uh, have, have freedom. Uh, Jesus says faith is about quality, not quantity. Faith is a relationship. It's a relationship with God. It is trusting God. And for Jesus, it's either trusting God or not trusting God. When, when you read Scripture, and I think it's when we, when we gather, it's always important for us to read Scripture, read the stories in the Bible, because what you see is people struggling to try and ultimately trust God. And when they do, some pretty amazing things happen. Uh, like the story of uh, David and Goliath, the classic story. A lot of us knew that as small children. Uh, David and Goliath uh, is really about facing life with faith. It has dangers and difficulties, this life, but it's about facing the human experience with faith. Uh, David is a boy, small boy. Goliath is a giant of a man. And uh, when I think of a giant of a person right now, I think of Aaron Judge, the 6'8 New York Yankee slugger. I'd be terrified to be a pitcher right now facing him because he literally is ready to crush every pitch thrown his way. Intimidating. The point of uh, David and Goliath is Goliath is huge, strong, armed. David is a boy, not armed, has little strength, doesn't have a whole lot of human power, but he wins. He defeats this giant because it says he has the heart of God and he is full of faith, and that's what he relies on. Goliath relies on other things. You know, that story uh, was told to remind the ancient Jewish people things they had forgotten. They reminded them that uh, they had done, were able to do great things because they had trusted, on, had trusted in God. They were freed from the uh, bondage of Egypt because they trusted in God. They uh, passed through the deep waters uh, of the Red Sea trusting God. They went through this desert experience for many, many years where they didn't know where their next meal was coming from because they trusted God. They entered the promised land trusting God. They became a great nation under David who became the king by trusting in God. And then you get to 1 Samuel and all of a sudden it says they want to be like other nations. They want to start relying on force and might and power and anointing kings in being strong in worldly terms. And uh, that's not ultimately the way they became great. We remember they became great because they trusted, they had faith. And the uh, story of Goliath is told to remind them your whole life depends once more on God. God created you, sustained you, saved you. And ultimately to have faith means you trust that God can do it again and again and again in the next chapters of your journey. It's the same understanding of faith that Jesus is saying to his disciples today. He's sort of saying, God is still up to things. God can still do wonderful things in this world. Uh, again, it, uh, if, if uh, you order the sycamore tree to be uprooted and planted in the sea, it'll obey you. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, uh, the problem isn't about them, not uh, that they don't have enough faith. The problem is they're ultimately afraid to use it. They're not using it enough. Parable of the talents you might remember uh, in Matthew. Uh, the master goes away. He, he leaves his servants with uh, tr talents or, or money. Uh, the first two uh, servants, they get a certain amount of talents. They invest it. They put it to use double, double what uh, the Lord had given them. Third servant, 
plays it safe, buries it, does nothing with it. But uh, the master returns and he rewards those first two servants saying, good job, you put it to use. The third servant he's really ticked off with. The third servant's kind of proud. I preserve what you've given me. Uh, but the master says, you don't get it. You've missed the point. You're supposed to use what I given, give you. You're supposed to do something with it, not bury it. That's really what faith is about. We're to put it to use. You're to use it. And when we use it, we can be surprised by what God can make happen. In one of her books, Madeline Leangle says this. She says, slowly I've realized that I don't have to be qualified to do what I am asked to do in this world. I just have to go ahead and start doing it, even if I can't do it as well as I think it ought to be done. And she said that's one of the most liberating things of her life, set, set her, her whole life changed. It's exactly what Jesus is saying to his disciples. He says they don't have to be super qualified to get started doing what he asked them to do. They just have to faithfully start reaching out. You know, I, I believe that's why Jesus chose the people he did for, uh, for the future generations to, uh, to really get the point. Jesus picked people who were totally unqualified, who really had no status in society. They wouldn't be the people who got up offering TED Talks. They were not sophisticated in the least. Yet these lowly people who didn't always get it were sent to the corners, all the corners of the world to make a difference. They made a lot of mistakes. Peter, the one we sort of say is the, the chief disciple, he made a, probably more mistakes than all of them combined. And uh, so in the story, they come to Jesus saying, Jesus, we just can't get this right. Maybe we just need a lot more instruction. We need more time before you send us out again. They're sort of saying what we have, Jesus, is not enough. They feel inadequate. And celebrate and give thanks to God. What Jesus said back to them is, you have more than enough. You have more than enough faith. Just use it. Use it. Uh, Paul Tillich defined faith as courage. Courage. He said uh, that what faith will look like when you see it, it will look an awful lot like courage. It'll look like courage. And faith is acting on the belief that God remains faithful. Most of the time, if you are doing anything in this life that is worthwhile and that makes a difference, It'll require faith, and it'll require an awful lot of courage. Most, most people think the opposite of faith is, is doubt. And uh, they think, I, if I have some doubts, therefore I just my faith is totally inadequate. Faith will never, ever remove doubt. It's always going to be there. But faith is the courage to go into an unknown future in spite of the doubt you might feel inside about moving forward. Faith does not remove fear. You know, it's, faith is really the courage to do the right thing even when your knees are trembling. And I have to imagine Pastor Christian Fuhrer, I imagine his knees were probably shaking quite a bit at times. Faith does not remove disappointment and there is just no guarantee of victory. But faith is ultimately the courage to just keep on going. Even when you want to give up, you just say, I just got to keep on going for the Lord. That's what faith ultimately looks like. Uh, Madeline Langle puts it perfectly. I don't have to have some special qualification to do what I have to do. All I have to do is have a little bit of courage to go and to do it. So it is with us. Keep on going. Keep on trying to be courageously faithful in this generation because this generation needs us, needs that kind of faithful witness. So we go and do it, and we see what happens. Amen. Would you please stand and join me for prayer? Christ Jesus, we pray for your holy church in every place and for those who serve following the example of Christ. Help us all to live by faith and to be courageous and share your, the light of your gospel. Lord, in your mercy. For parts of the world ravaged by natural disasters, especially those impacted by Hurricane Ian, relieve those affected by floods, wildfires, droughts, earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes. Bless the ministry of Lutheran disaster response. Lord, in your mercy. For every nation and for those entrusted with authority, Grant our leaders self-discipline in all things and inspire them with love for your people. Lord, in your mercy. 
for victims of violence, abuse, and neglect, heal those who have been harmed, and protect those who are vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. We pray blessings upon our Jewish siblings marking Yom Kippur this week. Lord, in your mercy. For this and every congregation, rekindle your gifts within your people, inspire councils, committees, and individuals to plan and work together that all may know your love. We give thanks this day for the partnership we share with the Fitzwilliam family, Nancy Fleming and Nick Radonik, Dave Jenny and Zoe Flood, the Fakey family, Fritz and Faith Foltz. Lord, in your mercy. Send your support and love to Mary Jo Anderson, Faith Foltz, Philip G. and the Sacucci family, Miles Lenzi, Jim Lucas, Samantha Luther, Hilda Mahoney, Tim Smith, Mabel Woola, Logan Pettit, and all those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy. We pray this day for the families of Marlene Culver and Michael Klesteneski. Surround them with love and support in the promise of the resurrection. Bring us all to eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, please join me as we uh, offer our gifts to bless this congregation and to further uh, our outreach in the world and, to, as always, to bless our neighbors in need. Uh, there's a safe box in the back if, back if you have a physical offering, and uh, there's instructions on how to leave an online gift. Uh, let's pray. Jesus, you taught us that where our treasure is, there will our hearts be also. In this hour, we come bringing our treasures, all that we have and all that we are. We come seeking your treasure, treasure that does not fade, decay, or disappoint. Share with us the treasure of heaven that we may boldly share it with others. Amen. Please be seated.
Friends, I may be weak, but your spirit's strong in me. My flesh may fail, my God, you never win. Because I may be weak, but your spirit's strong in me. My flesh may fail. Uh, I will uh, commune those who are gathered at home and uh, those who are communing in your seats first, and then uh, our ushers will invite the rest of you uh, to come forward. Friends, we uh, gather at this table. We come from many places, differing in age, differing in race, differing in orientation, politics, and even religion. As we come together around the table, we discover that our differences are not just something we tolerate, but that our differences are indeed a great blessing. The more difference we bring, the more fully we experience the presence of the sacred in our midst. So come, children of God, come just as you are. Wherever you are on this journey of life, you're welcome here, here in this place, here in this community, here at this table. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. The night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And let me commune those who are at home and those in your seats. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. You may be seated. We fall down We lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus, the greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus, and we cry.
Let's sing together. Be thou my vision, Lord of my heart. Not be all else to be, say that thou art. Thou my best, Lord, my tale by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence, my life. Be thou my wisdom, and thou my true May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of blessing at this table, we have seen you face to face, and in the gift of Christ's body and blood, our hearts have been refreshed. Send us now to shine with your goodness and bear witness to the one we have received, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. All right, y'all, you ready to get your gospel on this morning? Vicki found a great song called He's Real. He's Real. It goes way back to the days of Darlene Check with the original Hill song. Uh, so you have to be my age to know that far back. Oh, that was awesome stuff. So here we go. You'll pick it up by the end, I promise you. It's okay to move, clap your hands, stomp your feet. Goes like this. My God can never fail. He's 
Breakdown card. Hey, he says, Look at the earth, takes back what the devil's fear. My death is waiting for, in every day he doesn't My God can never fail. He's been proved time and again. Trust him and see. Back with the devil's stare. My death is waiting for. And every day he's a miracle. I got dreams to the end of plans. A tool big for human hands. Trust him, see, he's got all the power in me. You got to trust him, and see, he's got all the Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God never, ever failed. He's been through it time and again. Trust him to see he's got all the power in me. Well, he's never heard that. Never late. It takes courage out. It takes faith. You said trust him and see he's got all the power in me. Says for kids and me, did bad was the devil's deal. My dad's been waiting for her every day. He just made me go. My God can never fail. You prove now, time and again. You got to trust him and see. He's got all the power you need. Well, he's never. He's got all the power in me. He says, for give that steal. Take back what the devil steal. My death been paid in full. Every day go be record. Got dreams of them in the place. The two people you made it in. Trust him and see. Devil's fear. My death's been waiting for. Every day, the miracle. I got dreams turning into plans. Too big for your man. Trust him and see, he's got all the power in me. 
you got to trust him and see he's got all the power you need. Yeah, you got to trust him and see he's got all the power you need.